It's that time of the week where we talk about the very best comic books in the world that you can get that came out this week. Although we do have some gripes and grievances that we're going to get out of the way first. And here to talk to me about that is Drew from Comic Sleet. Drew, how you doing? Doing great, Wes. Back from Megacon. Uh, it had a great time. But I do make time to talk about great comics. So let's talk about some great comics and let's uh, vent some frustration at the same time. <laughs> so here's my frustration. This week absolutely sucks. We only have four comic books that we're going to talk about and recommend and we will get to that because there are four very good comic books that you should be reading, in my opinion. But this is also the week where Amazing Spider-Man and Batman, the flagship titles of DC and Marvel, and really the flagship titles of American comic books in general, came out. And they both suck. It's the weirdest thing. It's like Chip Zdarsky is going in reverse with Batman. When he started out on Spectacular Spider-Man, it was unreadable. And then it became amazing. He starts out on Batman, and it's amazing, and now it's unreadable. This is one of the worst Batman issues I've experienced in the last five years. Right up there with, like, Tom King bullshit. It is, and, and honestly, as soon as this arc kicked off with Bruce in this alternate Earth, we, we were laughing at this. We, we were reading the pages. We were laughing. Sean, me, Max, Kyle, we were doing a live stream talking about it. This is the complete wrong approach to take with Batman. And, yeah, I honestly, yeah, it, as far as terrible terribleness, uh, goes this is right up there with tom king bs and it's a very sad state of affairs but thankfully we have pros like mark silvestri around who can uh guide us through this uh pile of shit <laughs> well yeah thankfully there's 30 other batman comics coming out so at least there's something <laughs> good and then we go go over to spider-man and i'm going to review spider-man number seven from dan slot with doc on monday <laughs> which isn't a very good comic book but amazing no. spider-man from from zeb wells isn't really that much better. It is complete filler. It's like, wait, we need to do the big uh, event to happen in Amazing Spider-Man 25, so let's do an entire issue where nothing happens. Yeah, and you know, honest, I'm going to be honest with you. This entire Zeb Well run, I, I equate it, my reading experience, I, I equate it to the movie A Clockwork Orange with Malcolm McDowell. He's tied down into the chair, and his eyes are like, the uh, eyes, yeah. and I'm just like, no, it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. I don't see this getting any better at all. Uh, I am terrified to read issue 25 at this point. I, I am very, I'm almost certain we're going to get a one more day level of, of issue coming up. with. Oh, I think we're going to see MJ die. die. Oh, That's most likely. Kind of claiming. Biggest event for 50 years, obviously calling back to the death of Gwen Stacy. It's got to be the death of MJ. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And Peter will probably be the reason why she dies again. <laughs> well, is this what everybody wanted from Spider-Man, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. We all want that. Yeah. So is that well I liked the tombstone stuff at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes. But other than that, I think it's been complete rubbish. And to see this Batman series from Chip Zdarsky go down, down the toilet so fast is just very frustrating for me because this should be the biggest week of the month. You're getting the two flagship titles, Batman and Amazing Spider-Man. And the fact that they both suck is just it's very frustrating that we only have the four comic books to talk about, but it yes. can't be good for retailers either because these are the comics that are supposed to be bringing people into the comic shop. Yeah, you're 100% correct. And really the only people buying this stuff right now are the completionists, the Spider-Man completionists. No one's reading this. I don't know if anyone reading this and actually enjoying it. If you are enjoying this, I, I really want to, I, I really like to talk to you. I'm like, how in God's name are you enjoying these? Especially the Chip Zdarsky garbage can Batman run where he's validating Catwoman and fighting a Joker who's not the Joker. And then you have JRJR's art on Spider-Man where he's drawing kids with abnormal, abnormally large heads. I, I, what is going on here? <laughs> he's been doing that for a long time. JRJR cannot illustrate kids. Never has been able to. No. <laughs> no. So now that we've got some grievances off our chest, let's actually talk about the very best comic books. Not surprisingly, we're going to go to Indie Comics and start out with Mark Miller and Juan Ramirez on Nightclub number four from Image Comics. This has been a really fun series where you have three teenage vampires. They just turned. They decide they want to use their powers, become superheroes, and they're finding out that that might not be possible because they're vampires. And it takes a pretty dark turn in this issue specifically. We see these older vampires that were introduced last week. They're becoming a much bigger threat. It was a very interesting way to progress the story. And I think Mark Miller is just, he's on his A game. This is as good a comic book as you're going to get this week outside of Mark Sylvester. 
You're you are 100 percent correct when it comes to Mark Miller right now in his writing. This is arguably I mean, even going as far back as 2000, 1998, whenever Mark was writing stuff, this is the most consistently great Mark has ever been. Because I remember in the past, he would have one or two comics that were there. Were, one would be OK. The other one would be great. But you could tell like he was multitasking a lot, but uh, in struggling here, everything across the board Mark is doing is fantastic. And I think he we are seeing the prime of Mark Miller right now. And in this issue, for example, I, I love the opening sequence of this with our vampires being resonated. From- yeah, the bomb. Yeah, love it. And they, they, they go into a hospital and the one guy just bursts into flames and everyone's freaking out. Security shooting at him. It's hilarious. I love it. And the other vampires are on the run from the cops. Uh, we also learn a little bit more about the rules with uh, with the drinking of the blood, specifically needing, needing it to be fresh when they drink it. They, one of them tries to drink an old cadaver. Doesn't turn out too well. Uh, we also get the return of that detective, uh, Lis- Liscaris. Is that, how you, is that how you pronounce his name? Liscaris? And yeah, he's not too happy with how things have turned out for the, for the teenage vampires. Yeah, Mark Miller at this point, he, he can effectively do no wrong. This issue, this series is just so very action-packed. It's kinetic. Uh, the dialogue is near perfect. The art is terrific. Uh, if anyone out there is not reading Mark Miller comics, I'll, I'll say this. You are wrong. Please do check this out, guys. This is so much fun. If you are not on the Mark Miller bandwagon in 2023, you are absolutely doing comic books wrong, specifically Nightclub, because it's $1.99 an issue. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> the, the, yeah, it's, it, the only other comic that comes close to that price-wise with the quality is Gunslinger from uh, Tom McFarlane and Brett Booth. This is right up there. Yeah, it's just amazing that he's putting it out there, that kind of quality at that price. Absolutely the best value you'll find in comic books. Let's go over to the big two, because we don't got a lot to talk about. From Marvel Comics, Joe Fitz at number four, Peter David, Yildari Sinar on this one. Another very fun, action-packed issue here. We start out, we see that the Hulk has entered this big pit. Spider-Man sees what's happening. He comes out, and there's a little bit of a skirmish. There's also a really funny moment where Joe Fix it delivers Spider-Man to Kingpin. They remove his mask, and he has his face painted as Spider-Man, which I thought was really clever. And then we get a three-way dance between Hulk, Kingpin and Rhino to end the comic book? Are you kidding me? This is fan service in the best way possible. And, and, and forget the other villains, too. We get Electro, Count Nefaria. Every villain. Every villain. It's, <laughs> it, it is so it, fun. This comic is fun. This is what you want from a comic book. This is what you want from a Marvel comic. And Peter David, even though he's not in the best of health, he's writing circles around the other jackasses at Marvel right now. It's amazing what can be done when you know at, at the core – what a comic book, what a Marvel comic book should be, especially when you have Hulk and Spider-Man. I, I this Peter, it, I'm going to say this again. Peter David, I'm not saying he's on his deathbed, but he's not in the best of health, and he's kicking everyone's ass right now in the Marvel. Please do check out Joe Fix-It, guys. This is Hulk at its best right now. Absolutely. You get the best of Gray Hulk. Really fun issue. If you're looking for a really in-depth, uh, complicated story, not the comic book for you. If you want some fun, action-packed, exciting moments with superheroes and supervillains, Absolutely a comic book for you. Let's go over to DC because we have two recommendations from them. First up, Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo, number six, the penultimate issue of the series, Mark Silvestri, writing and illustrating. We get a lot of explanations for what's been going on in the big mystery and the jigsaw puzzle that's been putting together in all the things that Joker and Batman had had to go through. And we get this devil bride lady. Just what a wonderful character design on the part of Mark Silvestri. Absolutely was inspiring to see that kind of stuff. We also get the best version of Harley you're going to see in comic books in the last five years as well. Uh, I would say probably in a very long time. This is is the most fun I've had with Harley Quinn since the animated series. But uh, I'm going to to be coming in hot with this because I got a lot to say about this series as well as alleged Batman fans. Once again, this comic was the best reading experience of the week, and it's Batman at his best. We we learned the truth about Amanda Sims, the, the bride, uh, what happened to her, and it's messed up. Uh, I'm going to say this now. Uh, going as far back as D- with DC in the New 52, this is one of the best new villains created in the Batman rogues gallery. Yes, I just said that, and I'm right. If you disagree, it's okay, but you're wrong. Uh, a novice would say the Court of Owls. A great schooler would say Punchline, Miracle Molly, or the Moon Knight ripoff. But they yeah, have Batman been... Batman who laughs. Batman, yeah, Batman who laughs. They've all been ran into the ground repeatedly now, and they've most of them are just forgotten. Amanda Sims, this character, she is insane. She is a murderer. She's twisted. She's brutal. She's cold. And she wants to create a new Gotham with her children, if you will. And she's not, 
she won't stop for anything to see that happen. I don't see Zdarsky, Josh Williamson, T. Franklin writing a female character like this in DC ever. So I got to give Mark Silvestri all the compliments in the world for having the cojones to do that. There's a great scene on here with Batman uh, where Batman uh, cuts her arm off, but her arm is still choking Batman. I, I love that. That's great stuff. Great horror movie stuff. Uh, don't forget, we also have the Joker here, and he can't be completely trusted either. In Mark's art, it's God, God tier. Mark is at God tier level right now with his art. And this is the best joke. This is the best Batman has looked in a very long time. Joker looks creepy, and the ladies are scary and crazy hot. They tend to go hand in hand. But uh, Mark Silvestri right now is showing just how incredible he is as a storyteller, and we're all along for the ride. Uh, please do check out the back of this book as well. You do get the original pencils for some of the pages, and they are absolutely gorgeous. There's one specifically of a profile of Batman, and it, it it's too good. Uh, I, I can't wait to, to meet him at Dallas Fan Expo and hand him a stack of these comics for him to sign. Uh, it's going to hurt when this series comes to an end because DC isn't really producing much like this right now outside of World's Finest in The Flash. It, once, I'll say this again for the cheap seats. If you're not reading this, you are wrong. Please do check out Batman and Joker, the Deadly Duo. Fantastic comic book this week. Easily the best Batman comic book that you're going to read this week and probably this month. Just fantastic yeah. stuff. Mark Silvestri has still got it, baby, and there's no doubt about it. The final comic book that we are going to recommend, Flash 796, Jeremy Adams, Roger Cruz, Fernando Passerin returning, and about eight other artists on this comic book. The finale of the One Minute War itself, and I will say that it is a pleasing finale. I enjoyed it. It felt like it was lighthearted fun. He definitely goes out of his way to undo the sins of the past, i.e. Heroes in Crisis. All the characters that Wally West murdered in the past are no longer dead anymore. Whether he meant to do it or not, they have returned to the universe, and all is well, and they have forgiven him. So Jeremy Adams was acutely aware of what he was doing with Wally West, you were looking for the final redemption, and they've tried to do it about half a dozen times now. Of Wally West, it happens in this comic book. It does suffer from too many artists, though. That part did bother me. Yes, it did. That was I, that was my one big complaint I was going to make about this was the art. It changes too many times in this, and that really does hurt the reading experience. And it's a shame because you have – because I love the main uh, the main flash artist. I would I really wish he could have been doing the whole thing, but um, yeah, I guess they had to meet deadlines, get it done on time. But like you said, it's a solid wrap up. I I think you could say it's wrapped up at least a little too easily. It has a, the Wayne's World mega happy ending, which is fine. I'm not crazy about it, but it's okay. It fits. But the the end of this issue, the that very last page was fantastic. I want that page. Is it with uh, Max Mercury and uh, Bart? I, I beautiful page. Um, you could do a hell of a lot worse than this this week, like reading Batman. But uh, it, it, this issue is a good. It's a good finale, and uh, it's going to be a shame seeing Jeremy Adams leave this. Uh, please do check out the Flash guys. Also has another interesting villain that is kind of left open. We mm -hmm. we know that the Admiral was defeated from the Fraction, but it feels like he's going to come back eventually when someone grabs a hold of that. And I think that was smart writing on Jeremy Adams' part. So job well done, sir. Hopefully we get a couple more issues of Flash. I believe he he finishes up on issue 800, so she, we should get three more issues of Jeremy Adams' Flash before he signs off and moves over to Green Lantern. I'm a bigger Green Lantern fan, so I'm kind of happy for that. But I do feel for Wally West fans because you finally got the Flash that you wanted, and it's going to be abruptly ended, and that's too, too bad. But those are the comic books that we can recommend. It should be a bigger week. Because it's Batman week. It's Amazing Spider-Man week. It's Spider-Man week. It should be the biggest week in comic books. And it just didn't deliver on the indie scene, DC, Marvel, really. And it was it was, uh, it was was tough having only four comics to recommend. Absolutely. And I'm going to – a little spoiler alert for next week. It doesn't get much better either. I've already read DC and Marvel for next week. <laughs> so you've got your own project. So people don't know that you are the writer of Born of Blood as well as several other projects being produced right now. You had a word on Born of Blood. What was it? Uh, it was, uh, I got one thing to say about Born of Blood. Thanks for everyone who's backed it over the, the past two years. It's been fantastic. The series comes to an end with issue six right here. One of the covers we got by the great Ali Garza from Wildstorm Studios. Uh, every, everything is answered. It, will GR survive with Leonidas? Will Leonidas survive? Got to read to find out, guys. It all ends here in issue six of Born of Blood in stores this week. Well, that was fun. I always enjoy talking about the very best comic books that you can buy this week because there are still gems to be discovered within your comic shop each and every week as far as new comic books. 
If you like this video and you're like, but Wes, I haven't had enough of thinking critical YouTube. Well, YouTube has looked at the stuff that you like to watch and I like to create and has decided this video in particular is the greatest video I ever produced specifically for you. If you want some more thinking critical, check it out right now. It's waiting for you.